So today I'm going to give you 10 oddly specific movie recommendations. Now they're not all horror, but they're all kind of horror adjacent. If you want to get technical and very specific, there's some thrillers in there too. But I think if you enjoy horror, you'll like all of these movie choices, hopefully. I'm rebranding from horror movie recommendations based on your mood to oddly specific recommendations. So if you're familiar with this series, I give you random recommendations based on your mood, what you're feeling that day, because a lot of us mood watch is that a thing I know mood reading is a thing where you just like pick what you're in the mood for same thing with movies you know you're just in the mood for something weird and something oddly specific I have good news that all of the movies in this video except for one are streaming right now and if you're not located in the US where these are currently streaming that's where NordVPN comes in as you know I've been using NordVPN for years I pay for it myself I use it all the time to find media or movies streaming elsewhere when I can't find it streaming in the US it's definitely the easiest VPN to use. You just go to the map, click on the country that you want to connect to, refresh your streaming service, and you have access to all of their streaming. This really broadens all of the horror entertainment possibilities that you could possibly want. You can use it on up to six devices with just one account as well, so you are protected everywhere you go and have access to any streaming. A VPN is also essential in using the internet today to protect your privacy and your data from hackers or cyber attacks. NordVPN offers threat protection that works in the background whether or not you're connected to a VPN and server. It also blocks malware and malicious ads by keeping you completely anonymous online and hiding your IP address so you're not getting those weird targeted ads where they're tracking what websites you're using or your location. So make sure you go to nordvpn.com slash possessed by horror to get the two-year plan with an exclusive deal and one month for free. NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's really no risk to try it out. Okay, so let's get into the 10 oddly specific movie recommendations. The first one is very relevant for me today because randomly it's raining. The rain came back in. So this is a movie recommendation for a rainy day. Obviously we have movies like The Ring that very much fit it, Twilight if you're into that. So my pick for a rainy day is Identity from 2003. Stranded at a desolate Nevada motel during a nasty rainstorm, 10 strangers become acquainted with each other when they realize that they're being killed off one by one. This movie is pretty nuts. It goes places that maybe you would predict. I don't know. For me it was kind of a shock. And it is constantly raining throughout the entire movie. This is a very entertaining movie experience. Um, it definitely has uh, some surprises along the way and it is just such a shocking movie in my opinion. And it's a fun ride. It's my favorite era of horror. However, I would consider this more of a thriller movie. And you think it's cliche until it's not. Kind of. Our next recommendation is what I call better off single. I am not single myself, but if you're feeling down a little bit about the fact that you're single, I don't know, Valentine's Day just happened, then this movie is for you and I would recommend watching Teeth. I know what you're thinking. Teeth. That one movie with the girl in the, who has teeth down there? Yeah, that one. Still a stranger to her own body, a high school student discovers she has a physical advantage when she becomes the object of male violence. Now, you cannot tell me that if this movie was released today, in today's era of social media and TikTok, that this movie would not be iconic. I think this suffered a little bit from not so much marketing, because I honestly don't remember the marketing, but kind of like how Jennifer's body was made in the wrong era, I think. This is the same thing. They were made in the same era. And I think people need to give teeth another chance and watch it today in you know with today's perspective because I think it's a really fun movie I think nowadays we're having more fun with movies than we were back in 2008 I think we took them a little bit more seriously and everyone made fun of this movie and I think it just was you know a detriment to its era that it was released in now obviously there is some disturbing themes in this and I don't know why I mean obviously it's a little bit goofy I guess when you're thinking about the uh, concept of the movie with the teeth and and everything like yeah it's a little goofy but if you take it a little bit serious it's kind of a disturbing movie and a really good movie like it's a solid movie the performances are good so give it another chance Maybe you'll feel better about being single. I don't know. Next up is a very odd recommendation, but I do get asked this a lot, is what is a good movie to put on in the background? What's a good background movie that I can do house chores to, or you know, do a puzzle to, or whatever you wanna do with your time, and just have something kind of on in the background that you don't really need to pay attention to. And for that, I would recommend Malevolent. This is a movie that I never hear anyone talk about. It came out in 2018, which is somewhat recent. It kind of feels a little dated. It feels more like 2014 to me. A team of scam artists get more than they bargained for when a job at a haunted country estate gets out of hand. Now is this the best movie I'm going to recommend? 
Probably not. That's why it's perfect for the background. If you like Ouija Origin of Evil, I think you would like this movie. It stars Florence Pugh, probably one of her under rated roles. I don't want to say underrated because I think it's rated fine uh, for what it is. It's a very like straightforward kind of cliche horror movie. <laughs> so even though it's a little bit tropey and cliche at times, I still think it's a really entertaining movie experience and they try to surprise you along the way. But given, you know, if you have perspective, you watch a lot of horror movies, you kind of can't anticipate some things that happen in this. I enjoy Florence Pugh in this though, and I think it's a good one to just throw on when you got to do the dishes or something. Next up is a movie recommendation for the vibes. You want something visually stunning, just a good vibe, you know? Although I wouldn't say this is like a good vibe. It's a vibe. And that is Suspiria, not the original, the remake. I recently rewatched this the other day and I was just reminded about how beautiful and amazing this movie is. The darkness swirls at the center of a world-renowned dance company, one that will engulf the artistic director, an ambitious young dancer, and a grieving psychotherapist. Some will succumb to the nightmare, others will finally wake up. This movie is incredible and the performances from Tilda Swinton, who plays three different roles in this movie, are amazing. She's one of my favorite actors of all time, an instant watch person for me. Yes, this movie gets bizarre. Yes, it's weird. Yes, it's really disturbing at times. It also has Mia Goth in it before she was Mia Goth. I mean, she's always been Mia Goth. Now she's a little bit more mainstream, if you will. But this is the perfect movie to throw on if you want vibes. You want stunning visuals, great performances, like blow you away performances, and just bizarre. You want a little wackiness in your life. This is a, this is a great one. So the next movie recommendation is for when you want a dystopian horror movie. I don't think there's enough in this specific subgenre. It's one of my favorites of all time. Anything taking place in dystopia, I'm in. And we have plenty of dystopian movies in general, but dystopian horror movies? I mean, Black Mirror is kind of, you know, the quintessential dystopian horror. But if you're looking for a movie, I would recommend Antiviral. In a blackly satirical near future, a thriving industry sells celebrity illnesses to their obsessed fans. Employee Sid March's attempts to exploit the system backfire when they involve him in a potentially deadly mystery. So while we're talking about Brandon Cronenberg and Infinity Pool and all of that, and while that's, you know, becoming popular, let's talk about this underrated gem of his first movie he made, Antiviral. It stars Caleb Landry Jones, who I think is a very under rated actor and I really wish he would be in more things. He's of course in Get Out as the brother. He's in The Last Exorcism. I just think he's really incredible. And if you're a fan already of Brandon Cronenberg, whether you like Possessor or Infinity Pool, even if you don't love both of them, I think you would really enjoy Antiviral. Now I will warn you that the practical effects in this are real, so if you're scared of needles, you're warned. But again, it's another bizarre, weird, Cronenberg type movie, but set in dystopia. And I love the concept of selling celebrity illnesses to their fans. I think that, that is something totally realistic that I could see happening in like 50 to 100 years, maybe a thousand, I don't, I, I don't know. Next up is a movie for when you want a plot twist. Now, knowing that a movie has a plot twist in and of itself, I've heard can be kind of a spoiler for movies. I've wanted to do a video on plot twists for so long, whether it be a tier list or just, a, you know, recommendations of movies with great plot twists, um, but it's hard because knowing that you're expecting something can be a spoiler. So I'm gonna tell you about a movie that has a plot twist. So if you're not interested, you can skip forward to the next chapter. But I would recommend watching Fractured. Now for some reason, this movie is hated a lot by a lot of people and I loved this movie when I first saw it. Now this one's not really a horror movie. There's some psychological thriller stuff going on. Um, so it definitely leans more psychological than true horror. But if you're a fan of horror, I think you'd really enjoy this movie and like the pacing of it. Although I don't really know because some people really despise this movie for whatever reason. A couple stops at a gas station where their six-year-old daughter's arm is fractured. They hurry to a hospital. Something strange is going on there. The wife and daughter go missing. I think it kind of has an M. Night Shyamalan effect where you either love or hate the plot twist that happens and maybe it's predictable. Um, I didn't really see it coming, but I love how weird this movie gets. Like you're expecting something to happen and then there's a reveal and I really like it and I really recommend it if you're in the mood for a plot twist or like a mind bender too. Next up is a recommendation for a very specific genre of movie that I have been really into and that is trapped. Feeling trapped. I feel a little trapped sometimes, you know? <laughs> Not to get all deep and like 
therapy session here with you. Uh, but as a new mom who rarely goes outside, yeah, I've been liking the trapped movies. In fact, I've been making a little vibes video uh, for myself really as an art project of just putting together a bunch of movie clips of people being trapped as a way of self-expression because I feel trapped sometimes. Anyway, moving on. So if you feel trapped too, <laughs> or you want like a claustrophobia type movie, watch Oxygen. This movie was so good. Highly, highly recommend it. I feel like no one saw it, no one talked about it. It came out on Netflix, I think two years ago now. And it was hands down one of my favorite movies that I watched in 2021. A woman wakes in a cryogenic chamber with no recollection of how she got there. As she's running out of oxygen, she must rebuild her memory to find a way out of her nightmare. This movie is super suspenseful. I really like how it's just one location, one actor. She carries this movie. She does a fantastic job. I can't say too much about this movie because you really need to experience it for yourself. But if you have seen this movie, you know exactly why I like it. And I just love the claustrophobia vibes in this. So since it is winter time and it's still flu season and a lot of people are still getting sick, let's talk about a movie for when you're sick in bed and you're just grateful that that's not you with that sickness. And that is contracted. Now, huge trigger warning for this movie. I rarely recommend movies where there's an assault scene. So just do be warned, maybe check trigger warnings for this movie. I would definitely skip the scene because the rest of the movie is really great and just a very underrated movie. After being drugged and assaulted at a party, a young woman contracts what she thinks is an STD, but it's actually something much worse. Now this is a great take on this style of movie. Again, I don't wanna to say too much because I think going into it, not knowing too much information uh, would really help you enjoy this movie even better. I think there's some great body horror in this and it's gross, you know. Maybe you can kind of commiserate if you're sick in bed watching someone else be really, really sick and uh, just, you know, not having that sickness will hopefully make you feel a little bit better. Next up is a category I call, I want to play a game that's not Saw. I love game related movies, uh, movies where the, you know, characters have to kind of play out something, you know, like would you rather, things like that. Also, this movie is a great background movie as well. So if you need another background movie recommendation, recommendation. This movie is very simple, straight to the point, simple plot, and that is Circle. Held captive and faced with their imminent executions, 50 strangers are forced to choose the one person among them who deserves to live. But it's so entertaining. It's just a one location movie yet again, and just seeing how the characters rationalize who deserves to live and who deserves to die, I think is so fascinating. It doesn't really lean horror at all. It's very thriller, less horror. There's really no gore or anything going on like that. It's most psychological the concept but also pop it on in the background while you do the dishes and just watch it it's really good okay so the last recommendation is one that I get recommended all the time because I love talking about movies that have no gore but let's recommend a movie that has tons of gore sometimes you just want to watch a lot of blood and guts so I would recommend watching bone tomahawk this movie's messed up it's very gory it's very brutal. <laughs> in the dying days of the Old West, an elderly sheriff and his posse set out to rescue their town's doctor from cannibalistic cave dwellers. This is a great Western horror. Again, a subgenre that I feel like we don't have enough of. And this movie doesn't get lost in the setting. It doesn't make you think, oh, this is a Western that has horror elements, or it's a horror movie that's a little bit Western. It's a great balance of both of those things where you feel like it's a genuine Western movie that has a ton of horror in it. <laughs> great casting. In this movie such good performances if you have not watched this already please do only if you're a fan of gore and disturbing body horror and images and things like that so those are 10 oddly specific movie recommendations that i would recommend for your next movie night based on your mood if you have another oddly specific mood that you're in leave it in the comments down below and i will do another part of these part of this series uh in a little bit so yeah leave a mood down below uh, i hope you enjoyed and i'll talk to you soon bye